And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite, thanks to Tribooth. You can see it in the background. Don't forget the code TRIPAP to get $200 off your purchase. Uh, today, we're going to do an unboxing right after this. Let's go. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. With Tech to the VO stars. George Whittam, founder of Source Elements. Robert Marshall, international audio engineer. Darren Robbo Robertson. And Global Voice. Andrew Peters. Thanks to Tribu. Austrian Audio. Making passion heard. Source Elements. George the Tech Whittam. And Robbo and AP's international demos. To find out more about us, check the ProAudioSuite.com. Line up, man. So, George, you've got yourself a new microphone from Austrian Audio, of course, one of our sponsors. Yes, it's Christmas early, extremely early in this case, because I asked for this microphone a while ago and I wasn't sure if they'd send it to me because it is absolutely not in the category of podcasting or voiceover. <laughs> so I didn't think yeah. they were going to send it to me, but uh, they did because mm. maybe they see what I see and this is what I've got today to show you and that's the... You see dead OC, people? OC, <laughs> not yet, <laughs> OC707. So this microphone has a lot in common with other mics you guys are going to see from our unboxings. But this one kind of, to me, is like, I, I feel like uh, we should have done this last in a way because I feel like it's the best of all the others. But all of us are going to tell us why their mic is the best, I think, right? Yep. So OC707 uh, is a small capsule condenser microphone. Uh, much like the pencil mic that we're going to see and the mic that um, Robert's using. But it's just in the way that it's packaged. It's packaged as a handheld, right? So mm. why a handheld vocal mic for voiceover or podcasting? Well, here's my here was my thought. So wouldn't it be nice to have a mic with a good internal pop filter? One, it's always there and it's always with you. Two, that's the unboxing part. Two, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if the mic had a decent amount of shock mounting internally so the capsule wouldn't pick up rumble and stuff from wherever it's mounted? Yeah, sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole idea of a high quality handheld studio. Well, it's not studio, it's a live, yeah, it's it's a live a handheld mic. Mm -hmm. live yeah. mic, right? This is the whole idea of a mic like this. You're getting the quality of the capsule from their smaller diaphragm mics but housed in a handheld factor, form factor, so it can handle some hand holding, meaning it will not pick up vibration. So if you mounted this to a mic arm or stuck it on a table or clamped it to a bed post or whatever it is you need to put the mic, you're not gonna get much rumble or low frequency noise, right? Mm -hmm. Another cool thing about the design of this mic, look at that crazy head basket. It actually, yeah. yeah, it's like suspended. It's it's sort of similar to my mic here, where they have the capsule there, but the back of it is accessible. I, I think that's part of their. Um, they have a name for that tech. Uh, yeah, they do have their a website name for that actually. Design, that design aspect, which I can't recall, but the idea is they're trying to make sure that there's no coloration that occurs because of the capsule being enclosed in any way at the rear. So that's the. The idea that this should give you the best off-axis response, it should give you the smoothest off-axis response. So before I go further and plug it in, um, the only feature it has, really, if you call it that, is a switch. It open does, acoustics technology, I open believe. Open acoustics technology, yeah. And does have a switch. The switch does engage a 120 hertz roll-off at the bottom end. Maybe that's what the slope is, I don't know. It's I'm guessing it's probably as gentle, like a 6 dB per octave slope. But that is what you get on this mic. So without further ado, I'm going to plug it in and maybe a nice pop. I don't know if you guys yeah, heard the pop. Yeah, we got that. pop. You yep. have to gain all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this up and let's see if you guys are catching it on your end. One, two, three. Yes, it's definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. And we'll pot down our other one, the OC18. So now I'm on the OC707. And uh, tonally, it's very smooth with, with what sounds to me like a little bit of a mid-range, like mid-range, somewhere in the honk, honk. There's like a little bit of a bump in the honk frequency. And that's they, they did say that's by design. They actually said that it has a little bit of a forward 
this in the two to three K range because they feel it does help bring a vocal um, out of the you know out of the mud. Especially well, if you've got screaming life. guitars going on underneath you, that's going to help. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So, so if I was going to use this as a stand-in for uh, any of our other mics, my tendency would probably be to smooth that frequency out just to my ears mm. and kind of put a little dip to smooth out that little bit of bump. But other than that... Yeah, but you're pro probably talking about like, what, 2 dB? 2, or, two or, dB or so. And that's what's yeah. crazy. You don't think 2 dB is that big a deal, but it's amazing yeah. when you hear... Yeah. We are so tuned to hear our own voice or really human voice through a microphone, right? And it's just, we've heard it so much. So if there's any anomaly in, you know, in the frequencies, you pick it out really quick, right? But if it was a bass guitar and you added 2 dB of a certain frequency, it wouldn't be so dreadfully obvious. So yep. it's always interesting with mics. But anyway, does, that's the OC. Can you, do you, how is the other two mics set up so you can pot between the two, like go from the 818 to the OC707? Yes, I can do that. It'd be interesting to get like an equal distance and just kind of play around with that. Hey, before you do that, how does it handle off-axis stuff? Like if you're a bit off-axis, does it get a bit lost? Yeah, we can oh, try that. So, so I'm like, I'm gripping it like kind of like death grip, singer grip, and you're not yeah. hearing any. Okay, if I really squeeze it, there's you a little. If I yeah, move there, my thumb there around, you go. yeah, that's the amount of hand holding you get. But if you hold it the proper way. <laughs> As yeah, Steve Jobs see, would say, that. the correct way to hold the phone um, by the by the fingers like this, you get very very minimal. Um, yeah. I'm not using any high pass filters. This is right off the mic. So, so in terms of off axis, if I start speaking mic across the microphone now, and now I'm speaking at it at about now I'm about ninety degrees. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, it's yeah, still reasonably forgiving. Right? And, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's the rear rejection. There's the rear rejection. That's, the rear um, rejection. but you're gone, George. Why don't you put your mic back in your face? Because we can't hear one, two, you. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's yeah, it has an rear. amazing rear rejection. I guess the, the the thing that I noticed there is it was it took a bit for it to sort of sound off axis. Like it yeah, really it sounded really smooth on the two. first early angles, and then it, and then all of a sudden the low end really plummeted, one, and two, it one, kind two. of retained some of the high end for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So well, very access. smooth off axis. And what does that mean to you as a voiceover actor or, or whatever podcaster? It means that you can move around the microphone quite a bit if it's mounted on a stand, for example, and you want to voice act. And you can move around the microphone a fair deal. And the only thing that's going to vary much at all is the volume, right? So as you get further closer, yeah, it doesn't sound funky as you go off axis. So all, the, all in all, it, I gotta say, I'm extremely. And the proximity impressed. effect doesn't seem huge. Am I wrong about that? But yeah, well, if I get in deep, you know, those are there, those I mean, where you can really get that proximity effect, mm -hmm. and then back out to about. Yeah. Okay. So, so it is there. It is pretty about pronounced. this far away. Yeah, One, okay. two, three, four. So yeah, excellent sounding handheld mic. Now the sound, this the um, the self noise on the mic on paper is not all that impressive at 19. I think it's 19 dB um, self noise. I, I can't hear it over but my in, heater. But in reality, it's like, you, you, yeah, if you have a heater on, if you have <laughs> anything running in your environment, a fan, a ventilator, anything, you are not going to notice that. It, it would take an absolutely extremely quiet studio. And for reference, the Sennheiser 41.6 is 16. So it's only 3 dB, theoretically 3 dB noisier, and it's just not noticeable in any normal environment. So. So, and sometimes it's about just the sound of the noise because if the sound of the noise is smooth even if it's louder yes it's less of a problem than like some actual like <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Or, well, i mean yeah the tone of the noise whatever the yeah. white noise tone is and it's not very clean so there you go I'm back on the oc818 now but that's um that's the OC here, here, here do me a favor can you can you do like just kind of put them in the same place and do a quick like a sure, b yeah, sure. I will do that. So we're on the OC818, uh, and they're very much close in alignment right now. And then we will cross cross fade over to the OC707, so you can hear wow. there's a difference yeah. in the definitely mid less low end and definitely yeah. more high end. Right. For more sure. more yeah. forward, less warm, uh -huh. less low end. Yeah. Cross fade back to the seven. Uh, the an hour on the OC818. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. In wow. terms of like absolute purity of tone, the OC818 wins hands yeah. down. But if you want to travel and have something super robust for road use that you don't have to worry so much about, 
And if you want to throw in a nightclub gig while you're out on the road, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Get a> karaoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, this is a good choice. There All right. Go. Yeah. That's a very cool mic. Very cool. It mic. is a nice mic. I do. Yeah. I think it's basically the same as this mic. And you're going to explain to us why. Uh, because it's the same capsule and the head basket looks very similar, but not. A, I have a feeling this head basket's a little bit bigger. And probably this one has a little bit more a tighter polar pattern, if anything, possibly. But I, that's hard to know. Um, I forgot but to besides show that, they're clip. the same capsule. Sorry, yeah, I forgot to clip. show my mic clip, too. Which yeah. they, they give you the, the proper thumb screw to set yeah, the yeah, position yeah. and lock it so it doesn't yeah, move yeah, on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Sorry, cool. sorry, Ron. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's similar head basket, same um capsule probably very similar electronics that like it's whatever the head basket does and whatever else they do to voice it slightly differently i don't think it's even in the voicing as much as as it is in the uh, polar pattern because this is a little bit more of an instrument mic so i'd expect it to have maybe a higher degree of um you know like a tighter polar pattern maybe if they're mm -hmm. intending it for drums and things on stage um, but really convenient. I mean, I, I sent you guys the unboxing video, so we don't need to see that, but it is really convenient in the sense that um, it kind of works in the similar way that a you know an SM7 or other mics work on a boom arm. So it's kind of not in the way in the same way that other mics are on the boom. It kind of nicely um, gets in the right spot and doesn't cloud your view of other things. And it has this little pivot to it which is yeah pretty convenient so the full range of motion down. is from straight ahead yeah almost full range it when when you try to go like it won't That's get right back up uh, so, so right. like that, that'll limit some positionings yeah but it is it is a pretty good like front and back oh okay i, I did honestly wish it wouldn't have um just ran into itself collided there. to the body of the mic yeah 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 but besides that i mean it's it sounds great same I, thing I, I it's like very the like across their whole line yeah and then i, I got the I, um the the dynamic version and george i don't i think i sent you those files but so here's a dynamic one which really just looking at it the only main thing you notice the difference is just the darker color it's kind of an an interesting dynamic mic because it gives you these um filters and pads but it's active so a dynamic mic that needs phantom power, and it seems to um, maybe make it easier on the mic preamp. Um, it mm -hmm. still definitely does that dynamic thing, but it is, I would say, in there with other kind of hotter dynamic mics in like the kind of 421 type range where they kind of border a little bit more on kind of sounding condenser-ish. Here's your two um, samples. It's only an 11. Yeah, go ahead. It's a short sample. Here we go. Guess which is which. Be a part create together powerful remote production solutions be a part create together powerful remote production solutions so the second one sounds like the dynamic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly yeah. but and, they're pretty and, similar and the, yeah what you are know. the switches on there again give me a run it's a high pass controls. it's a right if, if i could see i could give you the actual numbers um but basically you have a 10d i think it's a 10 db pad yeah. And then a um, high pass, a three position high pass filter. Three position. Oh, cool. Three. Yeah. Off being one of them. But here, let me let me get you the. I would say that'd be 60 and 120. It's probably going to be the same as yours. Months. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was curious. Oh, no. A 60 or is it 80? 80. 80 and 120 on the filters. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the pad is, like I said, 10 dB. Does 80 so, feel yeah. high to anybody? 80 feels high to me. It. If it's a gradual slope, I had a uh, at work at at um, at um, cutters. We had my labs that had a four hundred high pass wow. filter. U eighty sevens, I think, are three hundred or something like that. They're are very they? high. Yeah, but no, they're, it's a, really they're it's that a high. Long slope. It's super 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 gradual. Yeah, yeah, it's gradual. Yeah. Now that that's interesting. So yeah, I'm wondering if the slopes are set differently on the on that instrument mic versus the the pencil mic. You know, it's, they're all using the same basic guts, just in different configurations. Yeah. They're all that yeah. same capsule, you know, they play with the polar pattern a little bit by the acoustics around it. Maybe the electronics, if they're changing that, it might change the noise floors. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Andrew's mic, I would expect it to also probably because that basket is so open, probably have a more, a wider polar pattern maybe. Um, and, uh, 
a little bit more open sound, I would think, for what Andrew has. Just because it doesn't have the pop filter. I mean, he does have that. Um, His little foam ball on there. Foam ball yeah, doesn't yeah, do yeah. too so, much. Yeah. Andrew, what's, what, what are your impressions of the, uh, of the is it CC8, right? Yeah, the CC8, which you also have. I um, do. I have two. I like so them. I, lucky you, I uh, I put this through its paces. Well, kit, that that is one of the problems. I'll go to the, <laughs> I will discuss. Your mic purpose. technique is one of the problems. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, he was it making a that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was a wizard a is never late. He always arrives <laughs> when he means to. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But I, I've put this through a lot of tests. I've compared it with the forty one six. I've put it up against the NTG five. Um, I've done it in the tri booth. I've done it in the porter booth. I've done it in my booth. Used it everywhere. Um, I think Robert actually. I sent a file to Robert uh, last week, and Robert's response was listening to the NTG five, the forty one six, and the uh, CC eight. That the CC eight mm-hmm. moves a bit closer to the forty one six than the NTG five. I thought which, so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that's what I'm hearing as well. It didn't quite um, have that. Has a little bit more truth in the mid range. It doesn't have that like sharp kind of yeah four sixteen forty one six like thing that I I know it's like what people like, but it's also technically what makes it not so real. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But this one, if you look at the uh, frequency response, it's actually it, it's it's very flat. Yes, um, and it's got a couple of tiny bumps in the top end just to give it a little bit of cut, but it, it's a very flat mic. I know from uh, other people who have played around with this mic, it takes EQ beautifully. You can really thrash it and it won't let go. So that that's a really good thing and just shows the quality of the microphone. On the downside of the mic, as we've already heard, it does tend to uh, pop, unfortunately. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're using this thing that you don't sort of pop continually. Um, I wanted to try this because I just like the, f- the form factor of it when you're traveling, that it could be a really good uh, mic to chuck in a bag and use when you're on the road because it is small. It's pretty robust. Speaking of road, um, who makes that mm-hmm. shock mount you're using with the mic? Road. <laughs> road. road. <laughs> so it does, it does not come with any kind of shock mounting on, of its own. It comes with No, it just clip. comes with a normal mic clip. Right yeah, now. just same, same clip. Same one yeah. as probably... Maybe I think it's, a, it's probably the same mic clip that I have. Right, I would say probably. Let me yeah. have a look in my. And so that's the, that's the trade off, right? Their so, their mic clips are interesting because when you first get them and you're trying to put that mic in there, you're like, man, I don't want to snap this mic clip, but the plastic is really strong and it feels like you're putting a lot of pressure in, but it's yeah, not the easiest. Like those things are exactly smaller than the mics, and you got to yeah. like. Well, the Sennheiser mic clip was the same way. I remember the 416. Yes, the 416. People, like, I would just think, like, like, is this going to fit? But that's what, yeah. that's why it doesn't fall yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, really. <laughs> that's all you get is the clip yeah. and and then the foaming. That, that's all that comes with it. So but, do you um, think if you were to travel with it, you would actually bother to bring along the bigger shock mount for it? Or would you just use the clip? I'll just use the clip. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not touching anything, nothing. It's going to be fine. The only other downside was... Because of having one of these, because mm-hmm. I'm trying to make the road case as small as possible, and that's right. why this looked really attractive. Like if I get a, you know, the old NTG5, you can I can plug it straight in. Straight in. Yeah. World's most yeah. badass USB mic. Uh-huh. Yep. That's what you end up with. But mm-hmm. this one is too big. It doesn't, it okay. doesn't fit. The chassis is too uh, thick. Yeah, yeah, it's too uh-huh. thick. And what you might be able to get is a... Uh, what would you need? A um, female to female or male to female uh, adapter, like a little barrel, barrel. connector. Yeah. Uh, Is yeah, it an yeah, extender? Yeah, yeah. They call it a barrel extender. Yeah. And I bet you that would get you plugged straight in there without a yeah, cable. Yeah, it probably would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Which a great idea. Which is essentially idea. the world's shortest mic cable. <laughs> off to yes. JCAR for you, is. Mr. Peters. <laughs> or, or you could just get your Dremel tool and start filing off and thinning out the back of that OC8. So worth it. Oh, so yeah. worth it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll making work. it a, per- a permanent <laughs> attachment to the Micport Pro. And just, like, well, these work together. That's well, I guess you could try to widen that channel in the Micport Pro. Which, which, which is it going to be, Andrew? Um, I don't think he's going to machine neither. the tail. Yeah, I would go neither. Yeah, he's just pull it apart, just solder it in, you know. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, 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 I really like it. I think it's, um, to me, the the sound of it is is really good. 
I'm, um, I like the sound of you on it, to be honest. I think it sounds it's yeah, really good. Yeah, I like it. I it like sounds it. the way a small diaphragm condenser should sound, which is really clean and really articulate and just dead, dead accurate. Yeah. For lack of we, would, which, we would use like small diaphragm condensers like that on stage for opera singers. Mm -hmm. you know, In like fact, that's an high. extremely common use case. You'll often see the Sheps where they have the little head yeah. On the end of this very skinny, long, long skinny pole stock yeah. that goes down to a floor. That, that stock is like $400. Yes. Talk yes, about the is. most expensive mic cable, technically. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. they don't yeah, yeah, use, yeah. Uh, they don't use, you know, when money is no object, they're not using large diaphragm the, mics. Those are even. the same things I think the Beatles used up on. Uh, on, on the rooftop, the, yeah. On, on the, the rooftop, yeah. I think yes. I think the Beatles ones weren't they? They were using the AKGs. I'm sure the AKG probably. version of that. With yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the AKG. Well, you know, Austrian yeah. Audio is still a young company. They're not trying to, you know, they're they're. You can tell that they're carefully rolling out iterations of the mics. Yeah. You know, they could eventually make a remote capsule version of this mic where that the capsule is on a cable. You know, yeah. and it runs down a long cable and. You know, for extremely small, you know, when you're trying to get the capsule in really tight spaces or mm. if you want to mount it to a violin or the body of an instrument or whatever, it, you know, so it, there's a much it seems more to me they're do. very much about their capsules and they're, and they're less about, you know, like, I, I, I wonder if they would, I don't see them doing it, but like, would they do a tube mic? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It Who doesn't knows? seem in their, in their thought process. Like, you know, we're just trying to provide very they seem flat, to be looking true forward. microphones and you don't really need a tube for that you know yeah for they color. seem to be kind of looking forward and not looking so much backward at like uh, traditional yeah, and it design. seems like they're not interested in color for the sake of color right they're they're in, like you you do your color we'll give you truth which i do yeah yeah maybe maybe they will do a c12 who knows who knows who knows yeah they who got knows? the capsule Robbo. yeah did you get anything new yet or is this all about us today no, I got a new toy too, but I mean, it's you've kind of seen it before, but I thought I'd unbox it anyway because it's very right. fun. And, I, and this is literally, uh, can I just say this is literally an unboxing. I, I was spoiled because, um, well, firstly, can I say hello to the asshole who stole my, um, my high X 65s while I was at my parents' place looking after my mum. But uh, mm. they kindly replaced my, uh, my 65s. Mm-hmm. And gave me a pair of 55s. The 55s. Ooh, yeah, nice. Uh, very nice. But very nice. So how do those sound as a mic if you plug that quarter inch cable into it? <laughs> they're, or the they're eighth inch in quarter inch? They're a bit like oh, this. It could sound a bit like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what, I, what they did give me was this. <laughs> Let's look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, this, this literally is an unboxing, I have to say, because <laughs> I haven't had a chance to get to it. But... So let's do it together, and maybe you guys can walk me through this because I'm an 818 virgin. I love that uh, they. I love the packaging that they give you. This isn't it so awesome? Cable tie. <laughs> and and you, I didn't That's realize so that they were actually giving it until I read the headphone booklet the other day. They're actually giving you this so you can snip it up and yeah, like you say, use it to tie your cables down yeah. and stuff. It's meant no, to have a purpose. Yeah. That, away. that in itself is awesome. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> That's cool. Oh, look at this. Oh, look. In its own little road case and everything. How's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the you know when they're, the you box. know when they, uh, they're in a different price category when they give you a case. A yeah, case. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's very nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. So look, this will probably, to be fair, this will probably be making the trip with me when I have to go into an agency client who shall not be named of mine, mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't believe in investing in microphones. So this will probably be handy because it will be probably be coming with me. Don't get it stolen from your car. Yeah. It won't be staying in my car by itself. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Certificate of quality. Can everybody, oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was, uh, been, oh, this year, 30th of the 4th. Not all that long ago. Individually listened to oh, and fourth, signed off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then Polar Pilot handbook sticker. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Some drugs. That's very cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Got the the cable that goes in the back of it yeah. for the second time. The mystery day. magic yeah. weird cable. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I, we were talking about these before before mm -hmm. we started recording. We didn't, and, we didn't like them, basically. Yeah, and George made the yeah. point that it doesn't swivel, which I yes. didn't. I hadn't thought about having seen you guys using yours, but you're right. It, the, yeah. the fact that it doesn't swivel. 
It's, you can't. It's not you a can't game do, changer. No, you, but you can't. You can't do this. Yeah. You can't rotate them like in the basket, right? So if that's yeah. something that you want to do, you can't do it with that clip. I'm using, Which, a, yeah. I, ironically or interesting, I'm using the original the 414 yeah. AKG 414 clip. Yeah, which right. is completely uh, compatible, yeah, yeah. interestingly enough. So if you yeah. have one of those laying around, yeah. you can use and, it. And honestly, those uh, Austrian audio clips are not cheap. No, I'm, su- I'm yeah. sure they're no, not. Like, I think they're like 100 yeah. bucks. Yeah. But um, it's a it's nice clip. Thing. It's just like it doesn't let you rotate, and that's the flaw. Right. Yeah, It's yeah. well made. It just yeah has that one yeah. lack of flexibility. So I recommend you get the, the Triad Orbit makes a super awesome pivoting ball head mount. Okay. That makes yep. it extremely easy to quickly rotate a mic. Well, mm-hmm. it's a ball head, so really any yep. direction. Well, um, the other but, thing they do give you, you know, I suppose, do, do, do I sound you... any different, by the way? How do I sound? You sound warmer, you Robert. Sound, You've changed your microphone. Sound, did that you, change? did. you just sound so dynamic. You're so, <laughs> um, But uh, <laughs> in defense of Austrian audio, I think I know why that shock mount is the way it is. Mm. Because if you look at the OC818 and look at the back where you've got, you, you can either put a, a you know, the Bluetooth dongle or the second True. mini we XLR. Yes. You're talking here? If it was completely mm-hmm. round, you wouldn't be able to put it in there because I, I can't use the Rycote on the 818 for that reason. Ah, you mean that this little thing? There is That's a correct. little, yeah, but okay. never mind my goofy little pop screen, but there is a little opening in the back yep. right here. And that's oh, yeah. that's the reason. But right well, they you give go. you that same mic clip for the 18 and the they other. Do. Well, I was going to say, other. if you wanted to be able to rotate it, you do have... I mean, it's not a shock mount, but you do have that option, I guess. Yes. With it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. To be fair. I mean, that, the bottom that, line that's is, why that, that is. Have we done a lot is, of sure. tests of shock mount to not to shock mount or not to shock mount, like in a context of voiceover? I don't mm. think there's almost any situation where you'd know if you're using the shock mount or not, unless you. I can imagine if you were a voice act, if you were voice acting, and you were one of those, um, and you let me turn, get off that. If you're one of those people that sort of you know, threw your hands around and did the whole, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, and you accidentally, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, it's not going to oh, take yeah. a slam, but if you bumped it or kicked it with your toe or something, it might help. Yeah, I mean, even with a shock mount, if I bump the arm, yeah, well, it's hitting the booth too, but yeah, yeah, if I yeah. bump the arm, you're definitely going to hear it even with a shock mount. So, mm. yeah, yeah, but um, it's nice that they give you, they give you the clip. You have the option. You have you the do. option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited about that. I'll uh, oh, man. this will be my me? new podcast mic too, by the way. So you'll be Austrian seeing Austrian audio has f- hooked us up. I would they like have, to say have, personally have. Uh, firstly, no <laughs> I know they're sponsors and I know we've just scored all this, but firstly, awesome gear. Seriously. My I was when my headphones were stolen from my car, I was devastated because I I'd, I'd never used headphones to mix until they sent me those a while ago. And I've fallen in love with them. Like it was, yeah. it was becoming my, my sort of C monitor. I sort of, I mix on my main monitors and then mix down in the crappy little computer speaker that I use. And then I was putting mm-hmm. the 65s on and, and they just become a part of my workflow. And I, when they went, I was devastated. Yeah, so, um, you were. <laughs> yeah. So, so the fact that, uh, the fact that they've come back. And by the way, if you're in Wyong, New South Wales, and some guy's trying to sell you a pair of Austrian audios in the pub, voodoosound.com.au, just drop me a line. Uh, my wife's uncle is actually a bikey. He's a Hells Angel, so I'll oh, he'll take, take care, care of that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll come and collect you, them you for me. an Austrian audio mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before and after them interview. for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Hey, you know what? I totally forgot, Andrew. I forgot to play your OC, your CC8 test uh, clip. Should I play that real quick? Oh yeah, sure. So listen. this is what is this? Five different, a few different takes strung together. There's uh, the first one is the NTG5. Second one is the CC8, and the third one is the 416. Oh, cool. Okay, so now we can hear it in context with two other venerable mics. Here we go. And it's all done in the in the booth. All yeah. in the. Which booth? My booth. And he He's actually is consistent. My main the same one. Thing yeah. three times Here you go. Yeah. Air Arabia's city check-in has landed at city centre Shindaga in Dubai. Simply drop off bags and get your boarding pass. Visit airarabia.com for details. Air Arabia's city check-in has landed at city centre Shindaga in Dubai. Simply drop off bags and get your boarding pass. Visit airarabia.com for details. 
Air Arabia's city check-in has landed at city centre Shindaga in Dubai. Simply drop off bags and get your boarding pass. Visit airarabia.com for details. So that was yeah, I, I, I think the word I used for that NTG5 was hyped. It definitely is yeah, hyped up. What was what the last one? Hyped, yeah. What was the final one? The last the one was 41.6. Yeah. Wow. He, the the NTG five really? is like the seventy five oh sixes of microphones. It's like just like low end, high end, like. <laughs> you know, I, I, I yeah. guess they did that because they, they wanted to sound totally different from the NTG three. It, it's not that it doesn't sound nice, but it is not. It's I I don't think it's flat. No, you know? no, it's not flat. The CC eight mm-hmm. is the flat mic. This is the CC eight was the flattest. This and most one right natural, here, right? Those three, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what a flat, proper, accurate microphone sounds like. The, the, the four sixteen had that like edgy kind of it like lost some low end and it definitely had that edginess that yeah, it works on commercials. I don't think you're doing your next album with it. Let me hear something. <laughs> you know what surprised it just has me? That, like, little snarl to it that I yeah, the, I actually uh, the, didn't like the four one six. I, I, I didn't. No, like but it. no, but you can see how it would slice through a mix more than the other one. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> but I, I guess I mean, I, 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 until I've got this sucker, I've been on the NTG five. Maybe it's because I've got used to it. But I just listened to that then and went, "Wow, that's so right. thin." Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, compared to the NTG five, it's very thin. Yeah. yeah definitely. That's incredible. Yeah, that was a cool come. Com- I, I mean, I liked hearing the CC8 in the, in the in the context of those two shotgun mics, because it just draws attention to the fact that those shotgun mics are those shotgun mics are not accurate. They're not Natural. flat. They have a no very way. distinct yeah. tone, and that tone can be a detriment or it can be exactly what the client wanted. So yeah. you yeah. can get lucky, and and a lot of people are used to that sound. I mean, we're programmed to hear that 416, 416. Um, on yeah. human voice. So we've gotten very used to that EQ curve, you know? Mm. So just out of interest, out of the three mics in that shootout, which one did you prefer? Which one did you find more pleasing? And which one do you think would be perfect for chucking in a road case and taking with you? Well, I mean, I'm not mixing it, so I could use any of them. Um, my just straight out of the mic sound, which just sounds the most commercial, ready to go on the air, probably the road, is my opinion. I would agree. Oh, wow. I would yeah. agree. Can I just say, I, I, 12 months ago, I would have said 416 any day of the week. But on hearing that now, it, it changed my mind. I, I think the road has a lot of low end that once you're done mixing, you're going to pitch it. And, I mean, yeah, you're going to cut that out anyway. But it's nice yeah. to have yeah. it, though, in the first place. No, I know. It's just the 416 gives you that just like push the fader up and you're done kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it just sits in the mix and it's not really, when you isolate it, you're like, ugh. But when if you I put take it in this- the mix, it just like kind of pokes through and it's just does that thing that I think that's what people are yeah. going for. Because I don't think you can accuse the 416 of many things. Like it is not accurate and it is not pretty sounding mm, and right. it's, it just has this like it's going to sit in a commercial sounding mix where you want that voice to be heard it's going to get heard with less okay. effort than the other mics but if i had to pick if i had to pick um, two mics for you for voiceover for you specifically andrew i would yeah. go ntg5 for your shotgun and i would say the 88818 for your large diaphragm they'd be my two yeah. mics yeah, okay. I have I just want to do one last experiment with this microphone because I, I, we know it's flat. But if I hit the 4K button on the SSL, that has given it more of a, uh, crunch. shall we say, a 416. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is like yeah. an instant 416 it's almost. Yeah. yeah. Yes, giving it that top bump for sure. It's just emphasizing what is there and pulling it out. That's right. That, yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. 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 That's well, I use the plugin so. that does something similar from um, uh, who does it? Slate Digital do a thing mm-hmm. called Fresh Air, which mm-hmm. is yeah, you've sort of about my that my go to yeah. for that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. just winding it in. Yep. Yeah. On, on, so cool. that goes if anyone cares, it goes on the voice bus, and it goes on the final mix bus. For me, oh, wow. anyway, that's where I use it. Yeah. Lovely. I, I would say I would say the 
oh, the CC8 is the most flexible. If, if it was a sound and you didn't know, like, you're going to do a hi-hat or a voice or this or well, that, yeah. I think the CC8 has got the most natural sound state. It's there. more of a desert island mic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could yeah. use that CC8 on yeah. literally any instrument, and you'd be fine with just a little EQ. Just call me yeah. Mr. Human, human voice included, I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just got to be very careful of plosives, as mm-hmm. we've discovered. Yeah. Don't blow yourself up. Indeed. I will try not to. Uh, well, that winds up another one. Don't forget, Tribooth, they're our sponsor. T-R-I-P-A-P 200 to get $200 off yours. Just like that one. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribooth. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say g'day, drop us a note at our website. ProAudioSuite.com.